McDonald's is not going to re- be replaced by a computer. The people who flip the burgers aren't going to be replaced. Maybe the guy who takes the order. And even then, the special orders, the special situations, you need managers. You're not going to totally take away every job with automation. Okay, so don't worry about that. Now, then they say, well, if you raise the minimum wage, the cost of everything is going to go up. I heard one person say that a, a carton of eggs would go up to $10. A gallon of milk would be $8 because <laughs> of the minimum wage. You know, that is so ridiculous. But I, you know, I've run businesses. And I got to tell you, man, you know, my, when I had the beeper company, I had a lot of employees, you know. Uh, we had three locations. I was in the mall. You know, we had uh, several locations. I had outside salespeople. We had installers, all kind of people. I paid minimum wage and uh, even below minimum wage, too, for cash. I'd pay people cash and commission, stuff like that. Payroll is an expense, okay, but it's not the biggest expense, and it's not the biggest effect on uh, pricing, okay? Payroll, the rent is more uh, of a factor. There's way more, taxes are way more of a factor than on, on pricing than payroll is. Okay, because you can always uh, hire and fire people. You always get rid of people, give them less hours. It's all kind of adjustments you can do with payroll. Uh, so it's not going to increase prices dramatically. It would be a benefit to the local economy because people that are making, if you can get them up to 15 bucks a week and they're making $600 a week, which is still slavery, guys. Okay, that's still a slave wage. Okay, you're still working. Just to pay for gas in your car and to feed yourself and to house yourself, it's six hundred a week. Okay, it's not you're not gonna live in luxury on six hundred bucks a week. Trust me. Okay, um, but you're spending that. And everyone who's making six hundred bucks a week is spending that entire six hundred bucks a week. That money is recirculated right back into the economy immediately. And as long as you don't spend it over at Walmart, it's not going into the hands of six people that rule the world. Though there were six members of the Walton family that, that possess forty percent of this country's wealth, so if we, if if we get this, you know, the little adjustments we need to make in life, guys, you know, uh, minimum wage, you, you increase that. You don't spend the money over at Walmart. You spend it in local businesses and, and you know, in local shops and stuff like that. You know, and what a huge difference you could make to the economy. Just you know, your own little self, uh, in your own little world. So much can be done. So. Uh, but one thing that struck me uh, about the, the fear in the eyes of these police and these security guards when they saw these home care workers marching into their casino, <laughs> these like a lot of little old ladies and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, these weren't, uh, you know, anarchists marching in there. These were workers, people that work, you know, working people who have jobs that get to work every day, you know. Some of them were students from a high school. Uh, and you could see the, the fear in these cops and the fear in these security guards. And it makes me wonder, what is it? I'm not afraid. I'm, sta- I'm, I'm there in this, with the same people in the same crowd. <laughs> you don't see me all looking around and nervous and stuff like that. Something's going to hit me over the head. What is it that makes these people want to become security guards or want to become cops if they're afraid of their own shadow? And they're afraid of uh, communicating with the person next to them. I'll tell you, it's something interesting because one of the cops was saying, um, uh, okay, you know, we'll give you five more minutes, you know. And I said, I said, well, you want, my fries won't be ready in five minutes. I want to stay till my fries are ready, you know. And just the idea that I was like questioning this guy, he's like, I got all uh, nervous, you know, like, oh, oh there's going to be a shootout between us, you know. So kind of crazy, uh, confrontation's going to happen over these, uh, you know, the, the next five minutes that we're not leaving this McDonald's. We're in there a total like a half hour anyways. And now it's the whole thing, you know. Uh, so, do these actions do any good, you know? Does it really do any good um, to, to put on this protest out in front of City Hall? You got 500 people together. They march down. They, 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 they cause a little scene. Uh, when then you have the news media presented as fast food workers uh, striking for more money. And everyone thinks it's fast food workers. Uh, so it, it has to be a, a, a several pronged attack here where you have the people in the street doing these actions. And, and I think that you, you need to shut down some streets too. You need to shut down some highways uh, and, you know, cause a little, little agitation, you know, 
you don't you don't have to burn down the whole place yet. <laughs> you know, we have plenty of time for that in the future. You know, but we you know we do need to, you do need to cause a little agitation. You know, like you know, shut down some traffic. You know, shut down some shut down that McDonald's for for a couple hours. You know, and that costs them some money. You know, you got to make yourself your presence known. You know, but then on the other hand, you also have to have people in the media explaining that it's not about fast food workers and it's not as simple as they try to make it sound because all they got to do is just take what we're doing and just throw it away but if you know these are fast food workers oh well, fast food workers well all you got to do is they're going to be replaced by computers because uh, people can make and, and people think the average person thinks yeah that's true you know i can just place the order myself for my car on a push button i don't need this guy asking me what's your order please but in in, in reality you do Okay, because right now we got the person there, right, taking the order, and that, it takes ten minutes to get that order to the guy. So it's not going to get any simpler. Okay, people are going to hit the wrong button, all kinds of nonsense is going to happen, and, and things are going to you're going to have a big mess. Just like when you you have a self checkout, okay, at some of these supermarkets and stuff, but there's someone there who's keeping track of these seven or eight different checkout stations. You're going to need humans all the time. You're going to need humans to mop up. You need humans to replace little sugars in the packets and stuff like that. Do all that kind of stuff. You need humans to, to get the meat from the freezer and bring it to the fryers. All this kind of stuff. So this idea that they're going to put themselves out of a job by getting a decent living wage is a myth. It's a lie. They're lying to you. They're trying to fool you. Don't believe them. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um... Oh, I got a big show coming up in the member section. Ah, I forgot all about this. Good thing I got these notes. Um, I, I got to arrange this. But I'm going to be interviewing this family out here, the Sheehan family, who lives here in Henderson, Nevada. And their family has owned property up at Area 51 before Area 51 was there. They were up there. They had little mining a town, you know, and they had a, a, you know, like a ranch, you know, with horses and, you know, ca- you know, what do you call it? What do you call those uh, animals on a ranch? You know, uh, cattle, whatever they call it. Uh, <laughs> so they had a ranch up there and they had like mining. They did mining and stuff. And they were there before Area 51 came in. And as my, and the, the story is fascinating, too, because I heard some of it. That when Area 51 came out there, uh they just sent some surveyors out there with no equipment or anything. They would have died out there of exposure. But this family took them in and let them sleep in their barns and stuff. And that's the only reason why Area 51 got built to begin with. Because this family took these people in and helped them out uh, with the conditions and the elements. Uh, so they were there before Area 51. Now they're, they're, they're using eminent domain to kick this family out because Area 51 wants their land. And they're taking it over. And it looks like they're going to succeed. Uh, but then they're negotiating over the, the cost and the prices and stuff like that, how much they're going to get paid. But v- they have a lot of interesting stories to tell about what's been going on up there, okay, in reality, not the fantasy stuff that you hear about. Uh, a lot of stuff about toxic waste dumping, uh, practice shooting where they were, like, shooting over their heads when the kids were outside playing and stuff like that. All kinds of crazy stories. Uh, so they're going to be coming on and be telling us the real story about what really goes on up at Area 51, and I'll give you a little, uh, what do you call, um, sneak preview, is they know a lot of stuff about all the rumors that you hear about what goes on up there. So, and these people have nothing, they get, they're no friends of the government right now, they're fighting with the government, uh, they have no reason to keep any secrets from us, and no motivation, and we're going to be talking to them, and we're going to be hearing the truth about what's been going on up at Area 51. Now that's in the members section at oppermanreport.com. And guys, if we don't get some members, oh, but hey, you know, a lot of people thought I quit last week. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people listened to the after show last week and they thought that they, I actually got emails during the week of people saying they're sorry to hear that I quit the show and that I wasn't coming back and doing any more shows because uh, I was so down last week. Uh, about a lot of things, and I, I know uh, I know I'm not making myself clear all the time uh, about what I'm upset about, and um, and I complain too much. I know I complain way too much on the after show, and I apologize for that. Because let me tell you something, you know, uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store. You know, I get to talk to May Pang, I get to talk to Malcolm X's daughter. You know, next week I'm talking to Billy Hayes, the kid from Midnight Express. 
week after that, Dr. Fred Whitehurst, you know, who, who ran a forensic lab. You know, this guy's like a you know big shot to me. You know, and, and people think, you know, and I get this whole thing about me and my ego and my ego, this and that. You know, you should hear, you know, if you were ever to talk to these guests, you know, and how we talk off the air and stuff like that, if, if you were to tell them, no, oh, I got this ego, they wouldn't believe you for a second, man. I'm so uh, shy around these guys and then and, and, and uh, uh, intimidated when I talk to these people. And, you know, like Dr. Fred Whitehurst, the reason why he didn't come on the show all this time is because, you know, I was afraid to bug him. You know, we were doing like phone tag, you know, and I felt embarrassed that I was bothering this guy and wasting his time. So for people who think that, you know, I'm this kind of egomaniac, you got the wrong idea, man, really, uh, of everything that I'm trying to do here. And I get frustrated. I get uh, 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 cranky, <laughs> you know. I get frustrated and I get cranky, um, but trust me, I love doing this show and getting to meet and talk to the people I get to meet and talk to, and you wouldn't believe it, but it's not just what goes on on the air either. Because I got the show, I'm able to contact people, like Bernie Getz, you know, from New York, the the, the, the subway of Atlanta, you know. He won't come on the show, but he talks to me off the show, you know. And you get to talk to people, you know, and I was doing all that research about the um, the Bill Clinton show that we did with Robert Morrow. Eh, getting Robert Morrow on is cool, too, you know. But in researching for that show, uh, I'm in touch with people who are really hooked up with the Clintons, you know, and really, you know, have known them their whole life. And, you know, I, I've met and talked to a lot of people with a lot of information. You know, and I get this information and I tuck it away. You know, I can't always talk about it on the air right away. Uh, there's things I can't say, you know, that I would love to. Uh, that I will one day, you know, I'm tucking it away for future use. And, you know, and I do that thing where people, some people are paying attention and know what I'm doing. Like I'll mention a little bit in one show and a little bit in another show and you've got to piece it together yourself. Although as the shows, we're adding more and more shows, it's more difficult to, uh, uh, to get that all going, you know. Um, but there's a lot of that. There's a lot of those clues and those questions that are in the May Pang interview. So you got to go back to the other John Lennon interviews and listen to all of those and piece it all together. And, and when I ask a question, you know, it's for a reason. You know, a lot of times it doesn't always make make sense. So it's just sometimes it even makes sense to the guest. Okay. But the, a lot of information I'm trying to get out of here. But what I want to make clear is, is I love the audience. I really do. I sound like Donald Trump, right? <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> okay. I really do love you I love the audience. I love the sponsors. We got the best sponsors in the world. Amanda from Pacific West Bamboo. The New World Mexican Women. Uh, this guy, Chris, and his wife and the, the mushroom people. A uh, straw man, Sean Duff, who helps out with the, the website and all this stuff like that. Um, is that all the sponsors we have? I think that's it, right? Yeah. They're, they're great people. They help out so much behind the scenes, you know. Like right now, Amanda's getting together with the New World Mexican Women and they're, they're selling jewelry together to help support the show and stuff and we're working on other, other projects in the background but i love doing a show i love getting to meet the people i get to meet and talk to on the show um i wouldn't be able to meet and talk to them any other way you know so don't think for a second that i don't love doing the show i do and don't think i don't appreciate your support i do appreciate your support uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, one of the things I always complain about is you get too many emails, get too many messages on Facebook and stuff, right? I was on YouTube this week, right? And I found out that there's a place in YouTube where there's comments that are sent to spam that aren't public. So I've never read these comments before. And I go there and I find this. There's like 300 comments. So, you know, there's like, <laughs> I got all these extra. And I'm reading these comments, man. People are so angry. People are just so angry about different things, insulting each other and making these crazy accusations and stuff. You know, people just need to get along. Okay, well, listen, we're coming to the end of the show here. Next week, I got Billy Hayes coming up uh, from, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Midnight Express. Now, I'm going to reboot everybody who's listening on Spreaker. We're going to say goodnight to PSN. And I think that's it. Yeah, PSN. Everybody else is carrying us uh, three hours. Uh, so I'm going to say goodnight to PSN. The people listening on Spreaker, I'm going to reboot and restart. And we're going to call up, uh, what's her name? Uh, the Bernie girl. Mariah Sandoval. 
uh, who's our new Bernie girl, who's going to be uh, updating us this week about uh, Bernie events. And she actually went to college and wrote a, a paper in school about Bernie. But for now, good night, PSN. I'll see you.